electrons are the glue that holds atoms together, then just maybe we'll be able to see that glue drying. The LCLS is the first machine which has the speed necessary to image that. The name of our center, BioXFEL, is an accepted abbreviation in our field for X-ray free electron laser. And you stick bio in front of it, and it says we're somehow using an X-ray free electron laser to study biology. Our center involves eight research institutions around the country, plus two additional research institutions that are giving us advice and support but aren't involved in the research program. The biggest concentration of research effort is here at Arizona State. John Spence is a professor of physics at ASU and he's the scientific director of the center. He's the person to make sure that we are doing the best possible cutting-edge work. If we think of uh, somebody getting an x-ray, a chest x-ray, and want to see even finer detail, you can imagine that you'd have to increase the intensity of the x-rays enormously. In fact, you get to the point where the illumination has to be so intense that it destroys what you're looking at. And what was discovered a few years ago was that if the exposure time is brief enough, you can see, get your picture before you destroy what you're looking at. X-ray laser is a new kind of beam that's incredibly powerful, that has incredibly short pulses, and it's going to let us look at the structures of important molecules like proteins at new levels of detail and in motion rather than fixed. It exists in a tunnel uh, two miles long near Stanford. So the students go there, they work all night and all day. It's a bit like sailing across the North Sea. You know, they have to uh, sleep in a cave for five days eating bad food uh, and doing eight hour shifts on and off. And so everything should be settled for the experiments which we start this evening at nine. Petra Frama, she and her group are actually at Stanford using the X-ray free electron laser to do an experiment. Yeah, what, what we are studying is a process of photosynthesis. So how plants, algae, and blue grain algae convert light into chemical energy. This is our bioreactor here. In the bioreactor, we grow cyanobacteria so that we can study photosynthesis and understand how it works so that we can eventually mimic photosynthesis to produce energy. A little bit more pressure on the gas. This is the liquid injection device that we developed at ASU and it's available to all members of the BioX4 consortium. What you see here is a special kind of injector which injects a very viscous liquid, a thing of toothpaste, and it contains nanocrystals of proteins and the goal is to determine the atomic structure, the arrangement of the atoms in the proteins. So keeping in mind that this beam time is so scarce, uh, I would say most of the work for these experiments is done in the months leading up to the experiment. And then the role of data analysts like me at the experiment is to try to give back uh, live feedback to the biochemists, to the um, beamline scientists, whether we're getting the information that we want. We're currently working on figuring out the structures of protein molecules that will help us design effective drugs to combat uh, viruses and different sicknesses. A big challenge for us data analysts is the sheer volume of data that we collect at all these uh, free electron laser experiments. If you're collecting it over one gigabyte per second, um, after a week at LCLS, which is a typical experiment, you can walk away with over 100 terabytes of data to sort through. To put that in perspective, four experiments at LCLS would be about as much information uh, as the Library of Congress holds. I'm very much involved in trying to make data analysis as easy and painless as possible, and that makes me very happy to be a big part of this. We'd like to develop the tools, software, technologies, so that a couple of people can come and do an experiment in a fairly painless way. Uh, freezing proteins in motion, stimulating their function and watching them go through all the paces that follow it, the ability to perhaps to do the structures of single particles, getting rid of the need for crystallization altogether. These are technological advances that could affect uh, structural biology and biology in general worldwide. And we'd like people to know that they exist and that they work.